Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Sunday, November the 4th, 2018. Let's talk about Nanito Donaire's fight against Ryan Burnett. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me just say, this fight is a must-watch, right? From this seat, I'll just say this. Ryan Burnett is the better fighter than Nonito Donaire. I know that's not how the fight turned out, right? But Ryan Burnett is doing things in the ring that I believe fans need to look at, right? First off, he's the better athlete. Donaire has kept himself in remarkable shape, and he's in great shape for a veteran. But he's not Burnett. I mean, understand, Burnett, when I'm talking about athleticism, I'm talking about while the bullets are flying, Burnett is a guy who can move his upper body. Burnett is a guy for whom, in my opinion, the video of the fight slows down. In other words, as things are happening, he has the physical capability to move out of the way, to set up his next punch, right? To break the rhythm of the fight. You know, that kind of athlete, right? The action's going one way. Great athletes can move in a different direction. He has the faster reflexes, right? All you have to do is look at his head, how he moves his head from side to side and how coordinated he is. Make no mistake, he's the better athlete. He's facing that breed of fighter in boxing that we call the KG veteran, right? That's the Nito Denier. You know KG veterans. They're the guys who are in against a guy who they sense is faster than they are, is fresher than they are, has more stamina than they do. But KG veterans have the technique to not get overwhelmed by the young lion right, to hang around the forest and to pick their spots. So, make no mistake, Denaire is also a fastball pitcher. His left hook is a plus, right? He's lived on that left hook. Other fighters understand that they can have a full tank of gas. When they get hit by that left hook, the fight could be over. Right? So understand, Ryan Burnett's first job in this fight, his absolute first job, is to not get hit by Nanito Denaire's left hook. Now, Burnett is so gifted, you're, <laughs> you're going to notice, the, the fight's really a great fight to watch, that he drops his hands in terms of Denier's right hand, right? Denier's not a plus punch. Burnett drops his hands. He's made a deal. He's going to block every left hook that Nanito Denier throws, right? But he's going to let Denier land some right hands because Burnett is better off offensively when he has a hand free. In other words, he doesn't want to, you know, turtle up because that would affect his offense. So what he's doing is he has one hand dangling, right? He has his left hand dangling. But you'll notice whenever Denier throws the left hook, you'll notice that Burnett gets a hand up or rolls away because he's a great athlete. Burnett's also the kind of guy, and it's a fascinating fight to watch, who believes in his skills so much that he doesn't mind being over by the ropes, having his back against the ropes. Right? Think Ali, think Floyd Mayweather. Right? This guy's like that. In other words, Denier's coming forward, and Denier's slick. Again, KG vet. 
He's been in the forest a long time. Right? KG vet. So Denier is cutting off the ring on him. Right? He's cornering Burnett. Cornering him. But Burnett has figured out the math of the fight. So Burnett doesn't mind being cornered. He doesn't mind having his back up against the ropes. As long as he is prepared to block the left hook. Right? Floyd Mayweather, Marcus Maidana. I encourage people to revisit that fight. Same type dynamic. Right? Mayweather doesn't mind having his back up against the ropes. As long as Maidana is not in a position to actually land the shots he's throwing. Now here, Denier does land some right hands. But understand, Burnett's done the math. He's prepared to let some right hands land. Because he's so gifted as he pivots out of the pocket, he's able to get off combinations. So I had Burnett winning the fight. Understand one of the secrets to KG vets is they are older. They can't match the activity level of young guys with better athleticism and faster hands. Right? They just can't. Unless, of course, they're fighting Yui Fury, but that's another story. Right? So, Denier is doing what vets do. He's looking for spots. When the spot comes, he comes in. He's throwing shots, right? He's trying to set it up so the other guy switches off for a moment and he can then try to throw his big left hand. He tries to throw the big left hand at times in this fight, but Burnett is ready, right? Everyone's ready early in the fight. Everyone remembers their notes. Stay away from the left hook. Everyone remembers that early. It's later in the fight when you're a little bit tired, when you're a little bit distracted, when you've been hit a little bit that you start to forget your notes. This fight never makes it that far. What happens is one of the better round fours we've had this year. Let me just say, in terms of spacing, Burnett has the better legs. In my opinion, Burnett's winning the fight going into round four. Right? Understand, Denier isn't discouraged. Right? KG vets understand, hey, you know what? This young guy's going to have his moments. <laughs> you know, I'm just hanging out here, hoping that an opportunity happens. So then ironically, right? First we have round three. Burnett starts to open up. Actually lands some big shots on Denier. Has Denier on his back foot. Now understand. Again, Denier's a KG vet. He's front foot, he's back foot. Right? He KOs Vic Darchinian off his back foot. Right? With his back up against the ropes. Right? So Denier's pretty savvy. But understand, Denier's thrown out of his game in the third round. You get a hint of the fact that the upside on Burnett, Burnett's A game, is higher than Denier's A game at this stage of Denier's career. So then we get to the fourth round. And Burnett ups the ante on movement. You notice, Burnett's the kind of guy who can jump in and jump back, and Denier can't follow him. Right? He just has the gift of younger, fresher legs, better athleticism. That's where the fight is. when Burnett throws out his back, right? I'm just telling you, he was on his way to a victory. You just got the feeling as the fight continued, unless Denier landed a left hook, you just got the feeling that Denier was gonna start to wilt. And Denier, uh, and Denier has hand speed and spurts, right? But you got the feeling Denier was gonna start to wilt. And Burnett was going to start to take over. You definitely see that in the third round when he gets Denier on his back foot. Well, you know what happens. He throws out his back. 
you can tell it's major. Just by the way he gets off the canvas. Just by the fact that he's not even trying to hide the fact that it's a back injury. So he gets off the canvas. Then what I want the boxing hardcore to do is to look at how Denaire plays it. Denaire cuts off the ring. Right? A lot of guys can't do that, folks. Denaire cuts off the ring. <laughs> then Denier is coming in with heavy shots. But what I liked about Denier is whereas young guys would jump in and empty the gun, right? Be up on the guy, trying to smother the guy, and just throwing a lot of punches up close, figuring this is my shot. Because no one at the time knows whether Burnett is going to recover and then be fresh the next round. All you know is he's hurt this round. This is Denier's opportunity. But what Denier does instead, and it's really well done, it's uh, KG veteran stuff. Denier cuts off the ring, gets him in the corner, comes over, is throwing shots. Then Denier backs away. <laughs> it's, it's just well done. He backs away intermittently. Right? He needs to reset. He needs to look at things. He needs to make sure he doesn't throw himself out. He needs to frame his shots. He's not going to waste the opportunity in one big burst of energy. No, he's going to rough up the guy, then take a step back. Do inventory. Right? Make sure that this guy's not playing him, so he just punches himself out. Because he's the KG vet. He knows his gas tank isn't as big as the gas tank of this younger lion. So he needs to be wise here. He needs to conserve his energy. He also needs to see exactly what's working and what's not. He doesn't want to be too close so his shots get smothered. So De Nier, it's intermittent. He comes in, he throws stuff, backs away. Comes in, he throws some more, backs away. Denier wins the fourth round big, obviously, because Burnett's on the canvas and Burnett ends the round with his back up against the ropes. Now, what I like is what happened next. Right? Burnett has older guys in his corner. Adam Booth, who's tasted a lot of success in the past with other fighters. Right? David Hay, George Groves. Right? A guy like Adam Booth understands, look, you know, I'm not going to risk the future of this young guy's career by having him in against a KG vet, <laughs> a guy like Danita Denier, who's going to figure out what the young guy can throw and what the young guy can't throw, and then who's going to exploit the guy. You know, so you know the rest. The fighter confides to his corner that because of his back injury, he can no longer throw right hands. And the corner stops the fight. Right? They understand. Look, we need to take the loss today. We're not going to have the guy go out there. He's already been roughed up at the end of the fourth round by Denier. We're not going to have the guy go out there against a KG vet who has punching power who's going to figure out that the guy is diminished and can't fight back, right? If we have to take the loss today because of this fluke back injury, so be it. Burnett has a bright future if he can recover from this injury. We're not going to risk that future on this fight against this opponent, right? Let me just applaud everyone involved. Burnett's corner for protecting their fighter. Right? I'm sure they felt their guy was better than Denier. Healthy. But they understood their guy was unhealthy at this point in the fight. And if the guy can't throw a right hand, right, just, <laughs> just line it up. If the guy can't throw a right hand, if a guy's having problems with his right hand, if his opponent is an A-plus left hook thrower, that 
that's a recipe for disaster. Let me also give Denier credit because understand this is what KG vets dream of. This is why older guys take fights against younger guys. Because if their experience can just enable them to survive, right? If they could just get the fight out of the early innings and just survive the young man's A game, then some opportunities are going to open up. And when those opportunities open up, the KG guy has the experience to know how to capitalize on them. That's what Denier did. He came prepared to fight. He fought an excellent fight. The other guy hurt his back. By the way, let's also credit Denier with the spacing that helped make Burnett hurt his back. Understand, Denier is cagey. There are times in this fight where Denier takes a step back, right? It's when Denier moves back and Burnett tries to then move forward that Burnett hurts his back, right? Denier's not reckless or anything like that. He's surviving. He's picking his spots. And for that today, being prepared, being ready, being opportunistic, for all of that today, being a professional. Benito Denier is now a world title holder, right? I congratulate everyone involved. Keep an eye on Burnett. Let me say this too for gamblers. You need to always remember that this guy threw out his back today because what it means is that when he fights guys who are KG vets who know how to move back and who have spacing and stuff like that, when he fights younger guys who have movement, who are going to put him in awkward positions, there's always that possibility that his back is going to go out again. Right? Understand, as talented as Burnett is, Right? You have to give his opponents long shots. Right? A reasonable chance of pulling an upset. Right? Because things like this, it's just like a joint that pops out. It's like George Groves' shoulder. Right? You don't have to be able to beat Burnett's A game. If Burnett's back's going to pop out and he goes from A game to C game, right? The, the challenge for opponents is going to be to make the fight stressful enough where there's a chance that Burnett's back pops out. Let me also say this too. Boxing has a psychological component. Right? I have no doubt that when George Groves fought Callum Smith, right, he was thinking to himself, okay, this shoulder held up in training camp. Is it going to hold up in this fight? Right? When you're coming back from injury, I believe it takes at least one fight, at least one fight, for the fighter to get back confidence in that part of his body. You're not going to hear it from the fighters, right? Because this is a testosterone-driven sport, right? Every fighter wants you to believe that even after a car crash, they're as good as new. The guy they're fighting shouldn't even dream of beating them. They're invincible. They're immortal, right? Every fighter believes that, right? But you, the fan, the gambler, need to look at this back injury as major, right? Understand, the corner understood it immediately. 
We're only seeing what happened in the fight. We don't know how bulky the guy's back was in the past, in training camp. We don't know if this is the first time his back gave him problems. Right? Look at him on the canvas. There's even a moment there when he's on the canvas where you're wondering to yourself, is he even going to be able to continue? Right? He gets off the canvas, decides to continue. You knew he wasn't going to be on his front foot against Danino Denier after that. Denier knew it. Right? So, Martin Burnett right now is in that category of extremely talented, highly skilled fighter as long as the train stays on the tracks. But if this back problem flares up again in a gladiator sport, where opponents are trying to exploit any weakness they see. Burnett's career might be in danger. This is even as, when he's healthy, he's a better fighter than Anito Denier. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I thought Denier benefited from being a professional from being alert, from having skills, from knowing how to force his opponent to reach for him. Right? From picking his spots. I think Burnett, if he gets by this injury, is going to be a major force. Is going to continue to be a major force. He was the titleist. Right? But, as I've said, Back injuries are big deals. I've seen some great basketball players, Larry Bird, Larry Johnson, cut down off of back problems, right? In fact, we have a phrase, chronic back injury, right? You know, chronic back problem, right? They don't say that for other injuries. They do for back problems. Consider the injury to be something to keep an eye on and to always be aware of. And consider Nanito Denier to be the consummate professional who's there, ready to capitalize when an opponent has issues. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If you saw a different fight than I did, if you thought Denier was dominating the fight, right? If you feel that Adam Booth should have been tough and should have said, no, we're going to continue this fight. <laughs> If you feel the quarter should have egged their fighter on, then I'd love to hear from you in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.